Hi, everyone. I'm Erica Del Sordo. Welcome to another episode of Today's Talk with Erica. Thank you so much also for subscribing to my YouTube channel and all of my audio podcasts. And remember, any links that we discuss in any of these shows always goes to the info section in both the audio and video podcasts. Today, I have novelist and an award-winning journalist, Catherine Casey. She's the creator of the Clara Jeffries and Sarah Armstrong mystery series and the author of 11 highly acclaimed true crime books. Her first novel, Singularity, was one of Booklist's best crime novel debuts of 2009, and Library Journal chose the third, The Killing Storm, as one of the best books of 2010. Now, true crime matriarch Anne Rule has called Casey one of the best in the true crime genre. New York Times bestselling author Greg Olson describes Casey as a true crime great. Casey is a frequent television and radio commentator and has appeared on the Today Show, Good Morning America, Day Dateline 2020, Oprah, Oxygen Network, Reels, Court TV, Biography, Nancy Grace, E! Network, True TV, Investigation Discovery, The Travel Channel, A&D, and other venues. That is a whole lot. Catherine, welcome <laughs> to the show. Welcome. Oh, well, hi, Erica. Thank you for inviting me. I'm happy to be here today. Yeah, absolutely. I'm happy to have you here. Um, I have not had an author on just yet of your caliber. <laughs> I'm had, first. Yes. Yeah. Well, wow, yeah, because I've had, uh, I've had, let's see, we've got my cousin, Cindy Papali Hammondtree has got her breast cancer books out, of course. And then we've also got a uh, Dr. Badia who's got healthcare from the trenches out. And now we have your nonfiction books. And this is something that we have not discussed yet on the show. So I'm so happy that you're here. Oh. <laughs> Let's talk about let's talk about these books. How long, first of all, have you been writing? Well, I started out as a magazine writer out of college, and I wrote for a lot of national magazines back in the 80s and 90s and in early 2000s. And I covered a lot of uh, true crime cases. I was a contributing editor at Ladies Home Journal for 18 years. Wow. And you wouldn't think that you would do true crime in Ladies Home Journal, but I did. And it was, it was interesting, and it turned out I had kind of a knack for it. So it grew into the books. That's awesome. So what's your favorite book? <laughs> uh, well, it's always the last one I've worked on. So right now I'm really enjoying the fiction. I'm writing the mysteries, which are really fun to write. I get to finally make it all up because when I write true crime, you know, I have the characters are there, the plot's there. It's all there. But my last true crime book is uh, was called uh, it's called In Plain Sight, and it's on uh, Kaufman County prosecutor murders outside of Dallas, and that was really fascinating to work on. That was that was a really interesting book. That's the case where the Justice of the Peace murdered the district attorney, the district attorney's wife, and the chief prosecutor in the office. It was back in 2013. Holy cow! Oh my goodness. Yeah, he's um, pretty angry. Yeah, you're not kidding. Talk to me though about how do you, you're writing about this true crime and obviously a lot of the information regarding these true crimes is not available to the public. How do you delve into writing about these stories? Well, I, let's take that case, for example. Uh, Eric Williams is the convicted killer. He and his wife. Kim, and they were both, they both had trials. So I start at the trial. I show up, I'm in the courtroom every day, taking notes, meeting people, building relationships with everybody from the defense attorney to the prosecutor, to the families, wow. the investigators. And then after the trial ends, I'll spend another six months or more going out and interviewing all of those people. Uh, I'll often do a hundred interviews for a true crime book. Wow. And they take me about a year to a year and a half to write. But, you know, you need all that research in order to, to get the real story. Right. That's, and that's why I asked, because I'm thinking that, that you know, it's not fiction. You, so you need to have a whole lot of information. So that answers it perfectly. And wow, <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of work. A lot of work goes into, goes into these. Now, well, it's actually really fascinating. Uh, you really get to dig into people's lives and dig into the story. In that particular case, 
um, everything that was on TV and in the newspapers, that was front page in the New York Times and the LA Times. And it was on, you know, mainstream uh, uh, news programs every evening. And all of it talked about this being a revenge killing uh, because the district attorney had prosecuted the justice of the peace. But when I, when I really looked into it, I found out there was bad blood between those two men that went back about eight years. So mm -hmm. it's really interesting to put that time in. And I have that time as a book writer. Wow. Um, and I remember your book being huge um, when it came out because of the, the you know, the grand um, issue that that case was. So mm -hmm. I, I do remember that. And wow. Um, yeah, it, it, it did, it's, it's done very well. Um, I was the only one who had actually had been able to get into the prison and interview the killers. Wow. So really? I always do that. I, I, there are only one or two of the convicted killers I haven't interviewed over the years. Most agree to talk to me. I'd imagine so. I'd imagine so. In my, um, intro, you know, we were talking about Nancy Grace, Court TV, you've been on these shows and that was i'm assuming for book research or did they what were what were you on those shows for well they've interviewed me after i finished writing the books uh they'll they'll do something on cases okay and then since i've covered the case uh you know i'm one of the one of the people they interview on the show wow and you've been on quite a few of them as well <laughs> So you were saying when writing a true crime story, it's about a year and a half. Um, <clears throat> what is your latest book? Well, I'm working at, right now I'm working on another Clara Jeffries mystery. This will be the third one. And it's, uh, it's really fun. Clara is a Dallas detective who goes back to Utah, uh, to her hometown, which is up in the mountains in Utah. In a, uh, it's a fundamentalist Mormon town where they practice polygamy. And she had fled there 10 years earlier and she returns rather reluctantly, but to find her one of her younger sisters who's disappeared. So uh, that's how the series started. That was book one, it's called The Fallen Girls. And I'm now, we're, I'm just finishing up book three uh, and I, I'm just really having a lot of fun with it. It's nice being in control, you know, in a true crime book, if, if people do really stupid things and it spoils the plot, well, I can't change that. So I'm stuck with whatever they did. But here I can write out characters and, and do all kinds of, I, 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 it's like my own little world. I get to finally have a little bit of control. So, That's so it's a lot of fun. Yeah. 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 And I was I'm back in, um, I was in Utah back in, I think it was the 1980s covering a case there for a magazine and I was in one of those little towns for a week where men had three four five up to 20 wives whoa uh-huh yeah it, I was in Colorado City in Hilldale and you know the experience never left me and it's just such an incredible setting for a mystery series mm -hmm. There are a lot of secrets in little towns like that, you know, America. <laughs> so I've heard, and oh my goodness, the things you must have written about. <laughs> now, is this, the, is this the book we were talking about? Because I know we're around the holidays now, Thanksgiving, Christmas. Is that the book that kind of delves around Christmas, or do you have another book coming out? Well, I have another one I'm working on that won't be out until next year, and it's the fifth one in my other mystery series, Sarah Armstrong. And that one is set at Christmas time. So I've just started to do the research for that. And I've been looking into things like how Christmas ended up in December. Uh, you know, it was the winter. Uh, it, it, it was marking point for the winter. So back in pagan times, there were all of these celebrations that went on right around December 22nd. And it's, it's really been fun, you know, like the origins of the Christmas tree I've been looking into. They used to bring the trees and the house for greenery. And there were all kinds of superstitions about the, about the trees. So it, it's really fun. And I haven't done anything around Christmas before, so I'm having a good time with it. I'm sure. I'm sure. 
how is how has this year really affected your writing? Has COVID affected this, or has it made it better because we're all stuck at home? Oh, <laughs> you know, it it's hard for so many people, and I'm so sorry for all the people who have been caught up in this. It just it's just heartbreaking to see people out of work and and everything that's going on. Um, I'm one of those people who's always been home. Uh, writers are tethered to our chairs, especially when you write in fiction, which I'm doing now. So it hasn't changed my life a lot, except that my hair did go white. You know, <laughs> it, it didn't start out this way. At the beginning of COVID, it was much darker, believe me. But, um, but again, it looks beautiful. Oh, well, thank, you, beautiful. thank you. I do like it. But, you know, it, so it hasn't changed a lot, except that I don't have those outlooks that I usually have which I think a lot of people are struggling with. Usually I would work Monday through Friday and a couple of nights a week, my husband and I would go out to dinner or I would go visit family or friends. Well, we're not doing that now. So it's kind of intensified my work schedule. I don't have much to do on a Sunday afternoon except maybe take a drive and uh, maybe stop at a restaurant and eat outdoors on if it's a pretty day. And but I spend nice. more time sitting in this chair. I'm going to be so glad to get out of this chair when we finally, when we're finally able to do that. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure, especially like you were saying, especially because uh, myself included, when you your job is to sit in front of the computer, all you want to do is go outside. So I mm -hmm. get it. But <clears throat> it, I mean, of course, sitting there writing that really hasn't been affected. Now, what about? publishers did did your publishers close down did it affect any releases or what happened with them my publisher my editor is working out of her home now okay. uh, she's in london and uh she's been working out of her home uh it hasn't changed my interaction with her at all but i know she's uh it's changed her life she normally would have been in, in the office um, it's changed what what's really changed is publicity because normally right. I would have done a book, a little bit of a book tour. Mm -hmm. I would have done some book signings. And now I don't do that. Um, I can't really. So uh, I miss that. I miss going out and meeting people and spending time with people and all the things I think all of us are missing right now, America. Yeah. I, and I was going to say, I miss that too. I love book signings. So I can imagine both your fans as well as yourself. I mean, missing that, of course. I feel the same way. <laughs> I love I love book signings. Um, it, I mean, you really haven't been too affected, which is wonderful. So it hasn't stopped the production of your entire series and all of your books. Um, talk to me a little bit, though, about your your books in general. Um, what does it take from beginning to finish? Um, and I'm not talking about just the true crime, but let's talk about just a typical, how do you start? How do you begin? Where does your mind go? What's the thought process behind it? Well, it's really different depending on whether it's a true crime book or it's a mystery. With the true crime books, uh, I spent, as I said, like maybe six months interviewing people, going through the records, looking at the exhibits, doing all of the work, the research. And then it takes me two months to organize all of that because I'll have big file boxes full of materials and a ton of it on my computer. And then I have to organize everything, get it all lined up. And finally, I'm like seven, eight, nine months into it, I'll start writing. But I'll actually have the story in front of me because I've done all of that research. And the story is there. And I'm the conduit that sits down and writes it, that organizes it, and writes it. With, uh, with the mysteries, it's totally different. I just start out with an idea. And then I, I have kind of a basic, I have my characters already but that I developed in the first books in each of the series. And I have an idea of how, I know how the book starts. I usually know how it ends. And the middle is a mystery. And I have to sit there and just kind of plod my way through it and figure out how it builds. So I, some writers go through and they'll make up outlines with fiction. I don't do that. I really like to let the books kind of evolve 
and let the story kind of take its own shape. So it's fun. Every once in a while I'll say to my husband, he'll ask me how writing went, and I'll say, well, it went great today, but I have no idea what it's gonna do tomorrow. That's and awesome. sometimes the book that I just finished totally surprised me at the end. I mean, it ended kind of the way I thought, but this whole other thing happened <laughs> I wouldn't have predicted, so. I love that. It, it, yeah, yeah, I love that. It just takes a totally different. Well, E.L. Doctor was a wonderful uh, novelist. I remember watching an interview with him years and years ago, and he said that a writer, when writing fiction, a writer, it's like driving through the woods at night, and you can only see as far as your headlights illuminate. But as you go along, you see a little bit more ahead of you all the way. And it really is like that. It really is like that. That's very true. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. At least for me, it is. I know that other people write in other ways. So. Yeah. <laughs> your books, obviously, being a bestseller, they're in every bookstore in America. Is that right? Yeah, you can order my book. If they're not on the shelf, they can order them for you. They're all over the internet. They're on Barnes and Noble and Amazon and uh, Kobo up in Canada and uh, in the UK. And they're readily available. Okay. I'll have those links up though. Also, this way folks can find them. Mm -hmm. um, you're just, I mean, it's so nice because your books kind of take people away into a different and you know what's funny we've got the holidays now we've got thanksgiving christmas i'd like to say a lot of people have time off but we've had an entire year of time off right for some people i know it's been busy you know there have been zoom meetings and folks still have work going on but um you know people can sit back with a nice book <laughs> and just take the time throughout the holidays and read and and that's what's really nice so thanks for offering up these books <laughs> because i think a lot of people can can, can delve into maybe a new mystery and kind of take themselves out of the whole COVID 2020 mindset that people have kind of wrapped around. And it's, you know, it's been an anxious year. Um, it's been one that's just been very, very stressful for so many people. So you mm -hmm. offer up something that really takes people away from all of that. And I know many people who love the true crime stuff. Uh, you know, they do. It, yeah. it's interesting. The true crime writers don't necessarily read fiction. And the fiction writer, uh, readers rather, and the fiction readers don't necessarily read my true crime books. I really have two separate audiences with just a little bit of an overlap, which is fun. That is fun. Mm -hmm. That is fun. Would you like to add anything? Oh, gosh. Well, just I hope everybody out there stays safe. And uh, let's just all work together and get through this. I think we're nearing the end now, and it feels really good to see that the light at the end of the tunnel they always talk about up ahead. So, yes, yes. And happy yes. holidays to everyone. Yes, yes, a happy yeah. holidays to you as well. What state are you in? I'm in Texas. I live on, I live in Houston. Oh, very nice. Okay, so very very nice. Is it cold over there? You know, it's it's uh, really beautiful this time of year. It's gorgeous, and our leaves are just turning now. That's really nice. I now live in North Florida and we've been hitting the 40s in the morning and I'm still trying to, you know, figure that out because I used to live near the equator in South Florida. <laughs> so, so it's been nice here as well. Well, Catherine, thank you very much for being on my show. Thank you so much. I'd love to get your books out so that people can, you know, see what you're doing. And I mean, like I said, not a whole lot of people have heard from a bestseller like you. So this was very, very nice to speak with you and explain what the process is and how you write your true crime and, and now your, um, your uh, novels, if you will. So thank you very, very much for being thank on you. with me. Thank you very much. God bless. God bless you as well. Thanks for listening to today's talk with Erica. Join me next week for another discussion with the experts who help make life easier. Please visit my website, ericadelsordo.com, where you'll find all of my social media platforms and more. And be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Once again, thanks for listening.